if you have an older car, you might run into this problem um, where the steering column actually feels loose. Um, so when you're using the turn signals or the cruise control, it is actually kind of moving around and it moves around a little when you steer. Like you can see, I can just move it with my hand. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. And in this video, you're also going to see how to take off the steering wheel and remove the clock spring, remove those uh, stocks, and how to remove the instrument cluster, because you'll need to take that off to access one of the screws. Before we start, I'm going to start the car and move the steering wheel so that it's as straight as possible. That way it's easier to line up when it goes back on because you don't want it to be off um, and then be driving straight down the road and the steering wheel's turned. Once it's straightened out, I'll go ahead and shut the car off and take the key out as well. For this job, you'll need a T30, which you'll need to be able to stick in the back of the steering wheel. So it's going to need to be pretty long, actually longer than this black uh, piece that I have here. Um, but we're going to have to make it work. I've yet to find in the store um, any Torx that are long enough like this, but not too long like a Torx driver where they actually like won't fit in because of the dashboard being in the way. And if you have the capability to, it's a good idea to telescope the wheel all the way out uh, just so that you give yourself as much room as possible to fit the tools. Next, you'll need to look at the back of the steering wheel. Um, there's a hole on either side with a little torque screw in the very end of it, and that's what holds the horde and the airbag assembly in place. So you'll need to fit your little Torx um, in there and break loose each side of this and unscrew it enough. My Torx is just barely too short, so I'm going to use a pair of vice grips to just break it loose initially. And then I'll be able to uh, just spin it the rest of the way by hand to loosen it. Now, both these screws stay in the wheel, um, so don't expect them to kind of come out of the assembly at all. They're supposed to stay in place. Um, you're just going to need to try the airbag assembly by hand to see if it's all the way freed or not. Right now, it's completely loose, so you can pull it away and start to disconnect um, both of the horn connectors and the center uh, connector for the airbag itself. You'll need a 10 millimeter hex uh, socket and then a long breaker bar to be able to break the nut free from the steering wheel. Um, it's really tight, so it's going to take some force to get it loose and then just take it the rest of the way out. Once the steering wheel nuts out, you'll see that there are notches on the wheel and then on the spindle to help you line it up. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mark these with a marker just so they're more prominent on there. And now to get the steering wheel off, you'll just need to pull with both hands um, directly back to get it off of the spline. And then make sure that the wires feed through the hole there. Now you have access to the clock spring assembly here. You're going to want to rotate it slightly if it's not completely lined up with the holes for the screws. Because um, then you will need to remove those screws as well. I actually misspoke because you won't need to take the screws all the way out, but you're going to want to make sure that you have a small screwdriver um, to be able to fit in the head of the screw and then loosen it enough so that the uh, clock spring assembly will just pull off of the wheel. On this particular one, there is a connector on the back, but you won't have to take it off if you're not changing the clock spring itself. After you've taken that out, you're going to need to remove these three gold screws that hold the wiper and the cruise control stocks on the steering column. In this car in particular, you'll need to pull the instrument cluster out in order to access one of the screws that is holding the plastic steering column surround in place. This is a set of puller tools I got off of Amazon. I think it was about $12. Anyway, this silver screw is the screw that you're looking to take out in order to get the column the rest of the way out. 
Now you can carefully pull this whole assembly off of the spindle. And then once you do that, you are going to have access to this collar that is the source of the loose steering column feeling. This piece is what all of the screws that hold the wiper stock and stuff on go into. So you're going to want to tighten this screw on the bottom to go ahead and make it as tight as possible so that you don't have that problem again. Once that's tight, you're just going to move that steering column cover back over the spindle and put everything back into place. Next, you'll want to put your cruise control stock back in place and then line everything up so that you can put those gold screws back in. I'm just going one by one, hand tight at first, just to make sure that they're actually threading, and then I'm going in with the screwdriver um, and tightening everything back up. Now, as you can see, there is no more looseness in the steering column when I go to move it. We'll move on to refitting the clock spring. Um, just kind of slide it into place and make sure that the screw holes line up on the back, and then start doing up those screws again. Now we can go ahead and put the steering wheel back on, making sure to feed our wiring through and of course line up the notches that I marked in the beginning so that the steering wheel is not off center. As you can see, I've got everything lined up and now the steering wheel nut is ready to go back in place. I'm going to hand thread that just to get it started and then I'm actually going to, once I hit the bottom of that, with my hand tightness, I'm going to go ahead and take the breaker bar and actually finish it the rest of the way, making sure it's pretty tight, just like it came off. Then I'll move on to the airbag and horn assembly and place that on the wheel after I have hooked up the horn and the airbag connections. I'm going to tighten this using my same T30 bit in the wheel just until it is pretty snug um, and you don't feel it. Uh, with any looseness or anything like that right there. Now you've got the airbag assembly on there. It's nice and tight. It's not got any movement to it. So now you can go ahead and start the car and make sure there are no new warning lights that come up, no uh, airbag SRS light or anything like that. And there is not, so we are good to go. Thank you for watching and join me soon for more DIY repair videos.